You are never alone. You are never alone. Just reach into your heart and Allah is always there. You are never alone. You are never alone. Through sorrow and through grief, through happiness and peace, you are never alone. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to this weekly edition of Family Issues. You guys give us a call. The number should appear on your screen. Uh, we are live in order for us to take your feedback your, uh, and your additions and suggestions to the program. Inshallah, it definitely enriches all of our programs. So thank you in advance for your participation. As well, get, get online, you guys, www.hoda.tv. And that, of course, is our Facebook is our uh, three w yes Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash hoda.tv and support uh, us there as well, and like and share the page, and remember to get on the Family Issues page as well. As every week, we post a question on there, on the page, and we uh, receive uh, a lot of comments, and we will read them, inshallah ta'ala, in the last segment of this program, so stay tuned if you posted a, a comment there as well. Of course, uh, don't forget us as well on YouTube, uh, 3w.youtube.com slash TV. That YouTube channel is really made in order for you guys to benefit from our videos after the live shows and share and, and like those as well with your friends and family. Don't forget also uh, to watch the live streaming. If the signal isn't strong in your country, you can enjoy the live streaming there uh, as well on the official Facebook uh, YouTube channel of uh, Huda TV. Without any further ado, I'd like to welcome back uh, one of our guests who has appeared on our programs before. He's been on Let's Talk on the Straight Path, and he's definitely part of the Huda TV family. Uh, he comes all the way here from South Africa. He was a uh, Hasn't been on the screen for a while. He was back home visiting his family and uh, enjoying Ramadan in Aid al Azha uh, in his home country. We're, we're happy to have him back. I'm, of course, I'm talking about uh, an undergraduate at Al Azhar University, Sheikh Zakaria Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hey, thank you, brother. It's been a long time. You've been out of the country. You've been down in South Africa. Just before we get into the topic, which is the importance of reading and how important it is as parents to make sure that our children read and how important it is for us to read as well. But tell me a little bit about how, how did you spend your last couple months in South Africa? How was Ramadan over there? How was Eid al-Adha over there? How, explain. Alhamdulillah, you know, it is always, we always anticipate to go home. You know, we always, to, to the meeting of the family, especially when they come and get you from the airport. Yeah. And the month of Ramadan, Alhamdulillah, in South Africa, it's quite lively. You know, the taraweeh and the recitation of the Quran and the amount of uh, you know, distributions in the people's house of the people's hearts are in the month of Ramadan. And, you know, it's, it's just a busy month. Great. And Great. after the month of Ramadan, you get to spend time with the family and, you Great. know, all issues come in and how to <laughs> solve the issues. And, you Great. know, so uh, that is family time. And also, Alhamdulillah, I was afforded the opportunity to go and visit some of my friends that were here in Cape Town, uh, here in Egypt, who are also studying with myself at the Azhar University. And they stay in Cape Town, which is quite a distance from uh, okay. Johannesburg. Okay. And they uh, took me to all the places in Cape Town. So, alhamdulillah, it was okay, great. a very nice sightseeing. And alhamdulillah, it was a very nice time. I spent family uh, time with the family and with friends. Hey, great, mashallah. Now you're back to complete your studies here in Cairo at Azhar. But I have to ask you just briefly, uh, we did see Nelson Mandela pass away. And that was a huge uh, media event. It was covered on, on, on most news networks. Uh, I know you weren't there to catch that, but can you give us a brief, you know, understanding about why this is important for the South African nation, what he meant to the South African people? Well, uh, as you know, this is each and every person knows how much he has affected him in his life. And each and every person is well aware of the struggles that he went through. And people were basically st stum uh, stunned and uh, amazed at how he was able to overcome those pains and those difficult difficulties that he faced in his life and how he changed and made each and every person uh, understand what it is to be a true human being. And the, his famous quote where he said that you can never be free until your heart is free. SubhanAllah. And uh, he was the person who came into, who was once known as a terrorist, who was once known as different names <laughs> by uh, and labeled. Yeah. And that same person became an icon of the world. Yes, and people who, who uh, a person who uh, at his funeral, you know, it's always, they say, it's not how you came into this world, it's how you leave this world. Right. And we can, we, we, it was, uh, his, his, his leaving of this world was a proof of how much of respect and uh, dignity he had attained throughout right. his life. Uh, over 90 presidents from different countries of the world attended 
for his uh, yes, funeral. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, people, the, the day his uh, funeral was announced, when we were watching on uh, the Al Jazeera uh, on the channels, you could see how many people, you know, different. Uh, the the most amazing thing was you would see different uh, colors of people. The, the the white people, the African people, you know, all different people from South Africa who once never looked e uh, never looked each other in the eye. Everybody was standing out to celebrate, uh, to, 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 to come and, and moan and, and condole and send their condolences to one of the greatest heroes that uh, we have uh, uh, seen yeah. uh, in, in South Africa. Yeah, thank you, Brother Fisher. And then I always say if we have somebody with high values and character like that in the Middle East, it would do a lot, a, a lot to solve our problems here in the Muslim world, inshallah ta'ala. But brother, let's talk about the topic, which is reading. Now, you are an undergraduate at our University. Of course, before you arrived here in Cairo, you had studied the Arabic language and had Islamic studies as a youth in, in your native country of South Africa. So how important was reading to you as a youth? Did you like to read, or was it your father and your mother that pushed you to read? Uh, exp talk about that a little bit. I would say, verily, in the initial stages, it's always... Uh, the importance of the parents uh, to, to push a child to read so that you could become a young, uh, confident adult, so that you could love books. You know, they, they, they once did a test also of where when adults uh, read to their small children, this creates in them a love and they begin to cherish books. Sure. And I remember my father would always encourage me uh, to recite the Quran. And my father would always, he would always uh, take me with him to the, to, to the masjid and he would always encourage me and by him doing this, this made me desire to become a hafiz of the Quran. Right, and it's great. So uh, th this, is, this is one of the, 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 the skills that the parent first needs to make the child because we become oblivious into this world. We don't know what is important and what is not important. Yeah, of course. And uh, our parents make that alive in us. Yeah, okay. And what I've noticed from reading is uh, that no matter which background you come from, no matter which, uh, which alley or valley you come from, no matter which place you come from, uh, but knowledge gives you power, honor, and respect. Yeah, thank you. That's a wonderful point. I want to share a brief story with you. My, my friend from Greece, uh, he accepted Islam, and he said when he had read about Islam in the Greek language, that he had read negative things. But because he also could read German, because he grew up in Germany, he was able to read books about Islam in the German language, which gave him a more objective perspective. So through his reading ability, he was able to find Islam th through this di direction. So I thought that's a very interesting. It shows the importance of reading. But perhaps we can speak about the first, I believe the first ayah of the Quran says, read. It's can you talk a little, a little bit about that? And uh, if you look at that ayah, uh, if you look, Allah uh, when the angel uh, Jibreel alayhi salam descended uh, to Nabi sallallahu alayhi salam, the first, what he said to him, iqra, uh, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. And scholars of uh, Arabic grammar mentioned that the ba there is al ba lil isti'ana. Uh, the ba of isti'ana means that you use this as a means, uh, you know, as, as, as a means of assistance. So that ba there, it means as a use and recite as a means of assistance. But this is to teach us that with knowledge comes power. And, you, you know, uh, the, uh, although the type of reading that came from Nabi Wasallam was a different type of reading, which was to understand and uh, which was more spiritual type of reading. Uh, but... Uh, some uh, other parts of the Quran where Allama bil qalam, it is mentioned that uh, we have been taught with the pen uh, in, 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 in Surah, uh, one, of the, the one of the verses, uh, Noon wal qalami wa ma yasturun, uh, you know, and the pen and that which it, uh, which it reveals uh, or which is sacred, you know. So, so many things has to do with reading and writing, which also is after something is written, the knowledge from that uh, expands and enhances. Yeah, thank you, brother. I was very disappointed to see in many Muslim countries the illiteracy rate is very high. I believe this is connected to the problems that we're facing uh, because reading and literacy opens the door of, of knowledge. Uh, and, and I believe seeking knowledge is uh, incumbent upon us. Uh, would you agree with that? Yes, it is. Uh, basically, knowledge is one of the main factors. And uh, the, you, you would always find that uh, to destroy any nation, or to destroy the culture of people, they take away that part of knowledge, Certainly. which is reading, right. which is because, I mean, <coughs> you, you find that most of the countries, I'll, I'll just give you an example. When I went to, uh, this was about uh, six or seven years ago, I went to Zimbabwe. And um, Zimbabwe had, although there is a lot of poverty, there is a lot of poverty in Zimbabwe, and uh, we know the different problems that the people go through in that. And we went for Taraweeh. And what was amazing was that 
we would see these long lines of people waiting to either purchase uh, petrol or gas or right. bread. Right. People would come from the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, oh. and wait in, in, in long lines just to, 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 to purchase some bread. Right. But what was found amazing was that people were very patient, very passive and docile. They didn't have no type of aggressiveness. Right. And I asked uh, some of the people there, and I found that most of the people were learned people. Right. So what I came to understand was that with knowledge, it gives you a sense of humanity. Yeah, yeah. Self-respect. Self-respect. Yeah, and respect for others. And respect for others. Yeah. Although those people were angry inside, but they wouldn't show it on the outer appearance. Yeah, yeah. And that is the power that knowledge brings. And with it, if it's not available, then it carries along with it ignorance. Yeah, thank you, brother. I certainly appreciate that. Now, as a student, okay, at Oxford University, uh, and a student of knowledge in general, how much time do you spend reading, um, and how important is that? Could you have reached where you are without being an avid reader? I assume that you have to read a lot and memorize, and, and this, especially in the Azhar University, and what I've learned from the Egypt uh, style of teaching, and Alhamdulillah, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless uh, the the country of Egypt. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the knowledge which is buried in Egypt, it's so much of barakah and, uh, and, and, and so much of blessings. So many scholars have been buried in the land of Egypt. And it gives us, uh, we as students that come out from other parts of the world to come and study, the amount of knowledge that we receive. But just to, 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 for, uh, for, for, for myself and a benefit for whoever is watching the show, it is very important uh, that a person uh, reads a lot. Because worth reading, it opens up keys. Uh, for example, if you come into the other university, most of the times they will just give you, the, the lecturer will just give you what you need. He's not going to spoon feed you the book. Right. So you basically need to teach yourself how to read. Okay. You basically need to, uh, we have different Moroccans, there are different Moroccans here in uh, uh, institutes which uh, assist you to, 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 to read. Uh, you have books. And it's very important that a person learns vocabulary. For example, if you want to learn the Arabic language, it's very important that you start with accumulating vocabulary. Uh, the second thing is learning the grammar. And with that is uh, discussions, having discussions. Right. And uh, also what I've noticed is, thus I've learned back in South Africa, or when I was in another institute, was that the books that we read, any student studying anywhere, if you really want to ingrain that book into you and instill and understand it, then explain what you have read to someone else. Right. As a way because of, sometimes yeah. you're reading, but your understanding could be wrong. Yeah, great point. You know? Yeah. So it's very important what you are reading, that you have a partner, and you'll discuss, and you explain. Right. And as that also builds up uh, strength in reading. Yeah, thank you, brother. I certainly appreciate that uh, advice. As parents, oftentimes we want to build uh, financial wealth and... Uh, this sort of worldly things in order to give it to our children to benefit them in their future, which is a natural thing as we, we experience the feeling as parents. But isn't reading a gift perhaps the most important tool that we can give to our children? Because in fact, by doing so, you give him or her the tools to provide for herself also in this, in this world today where reading and being fluent in one or more languages is essential, uh, in fact, uh, to uh, economic success and spiritual knowledge as well. So isn't this perhaps the, the primary objective of the parent should be to instill with him uh, this, the skill of reading because this opens the door of economics and spirituality? Again, just to give you a, a, a quick example of what you have just said now, my father encouraged me to, re to, to read. Uh, he encouraged me to recite the Quran. The reason of my studying with Quran has made me end up in the Al-Azhar University today. Right. Yeah. Uh, from the Quran, I started wanting to, when I completed the memorizing of the Quran, I wanted to now learn the meaning of the Quran. Right. And to learn the meaning of the Quran, you need to learn Arabic. Right. You need to learn Arabic grammar. You need to learn, uh, so, so from learning that, now you're going to have to learn other tools. You need to learn, for example, balagha, uh, uh, eloquence in Arabic. So it comes with many things. So right. now you have to go into those fields. Right. And once you come into those fields, then you need to understand fiqh and usul and ahkam. Right. So, yes. <laughs> subhanallah, just from one small. So basically, to answer that question, similarly, if academically you want your child to excel, you need to read to him. 
you need to read to him in that certain subject, get him interested in that, so that it could build confidence in him. And like we said uh, previous, uh, like we said before this year, it will make him cherish and love reading. Yeah, thank you, brother. And oftentimes, we do see parents here in the Middle East, especially, really emphasizing that their children speak English quite fluently and read and write English very well, which is understandable considering the world that we live in, and they're looking towards their kids' economic future and prosperity in that regard, financially. But oftentimes, we often find many speakers of the Arabic language not well versed in the Arabic language itself, which is a very, uh, has a lot of levels and, and depth to it. So is, important, is it important to remind our parents also that when we mean it's important to read and write and to be literate, we don't necessarily just mean in the English language, we mean in your native language itself, or wherever that may be, in the Arabic language, if it is your native language, because as we see, many native speakers of the Arabic language do not have a high level of uh, education in, in this regard. Uh, do, do you agree with that? I agree with that because, like again in the university, you would see many of the Arab students are very weak in the eloquent Arabic. Okay. Uh, uh, for example, this is the problem here in the Middle East countries. You would find, find most of them are more inclined towards English right. rather than their own language which they, needed to, which they need to keep uh, steadfast on. Back in South Africa, same thing. You would find that because of uh, just uh, going after one language and not uh, keeping back on your culture and your roots, you find many youngsters in today's time have forgotten their traditions. Okay, certainly. So uh, this is also, uh, you know, uh, like we said, it's very important that uh, the parents also in the house, uh, I had a friend of mine, and he was from India, yet he was living in England. But in the house, he would only speak to his child the language from India. Right, right. You know, and he would make him read books so that he said because he's cre keeping his tradition and his lineage. You're right, you of know? course, yeah. Uh, th that is most important. And when he goes to school and that, he could learn the English and that, which is easy to get. Okay, yeah, you thank know? you. I certainly appreciate mm -hmm. it. What type of books did you start out reading as a small child? Uh, do you remember the names of the books or did your parents give you nursery rhymes or what books do you remember reading and enjoying as a young kid? Perhaps you can share that with the viewers, the parents. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think so. Every kid starts off with uh, the basic uh, Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast. And, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you start off with the basic, uh, uh, all the, 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 the kiddies books that you have, you know. Yes. So that is the basic books that a person would start out with. And uh, I found myself, uh, because my uh, elder sister would read a lot of uh, uh, novels and, 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 okay. and, and, and you know, uh, but that was in a later stage. But before that, I was also uh, a lot uh, fascinated by uh, comics. Yes. You know, this was before I came onto a stage where I would uh, introduce myself to uh, Islamic books uh, and yes. all of that. Besides, uh, at, at night when you would sleep or something, your mother would read to you, you know, the uh, basic... Uh, Islamic story books that you yes. get in that, you know, so it was a whole mix, uh, yes. but uh, that uh, equipped me well to, to uh, later on decide which books I would I want, want to go. To and I want to get back to this point, actually, uh, but before we do that, I'm going to go to the telephone. We have a special guest via phone. Uh, we have a professor of uh, English literature from uh, El Ain Shams University based here in Cairo, Dr. Shukri Mujahid. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to our program, doctor. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Dr. Shukri. Can you hear me, Doctor? Yes. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us on our, pro uh, on our program, Family Issues. Uh, in this edition, we are speaking about the importance of reading. Uh, perhaps you can take a, a several minutes to discuss with me, Doctor, the importance of reading and how important it is for parents to emphasize uh, this point mm. to their young children. Yeah. Well, I, I have to, uh, to say first that, uh, Yanni, I don't hear you very clearly, but I can follow your argument. Okay, let me just restate um, my... Now, you, you, you've called me um, as I am actually practicing what I am going to preach now. <laughs> I am actually among my students uh, at this moment, and we are reading. Um, they are postgraduate post students, but I identify my job uh, uh, in this stage as teaching them how to read because the first step it is a step that is never finished the first step towards the formation of a mind 
and therefore a civilization is to be able to read in a rather profound sense of the word. When we read, we mean we think, because by reading, we make our minds interact with what we read. If we're talking about children, one measure has to be uh, 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 followed here, used here. Um, that the child um, can later say, I don't remember the first book I read. Once an adult, later I mean, says, I don't remember the first book I read, it means that reading huh, was introduced as food was introduced. We need to deal with our kids at any age as reasonable beings, rational beings, who are different from animals by this faculty, the faculty of thinking, reading. So, my own experience with my own children, now two of them are graduates, uh, is that I used to read with them to make listening accompanied by looking at the pages uh, over which they could not uh, identify a letter. But a relationship has to be established between the printed word and the child. And introducing one text after another, then you leave the scene slowly. You establish the relationship between your child and uh, uh, the, the, the written text spontaneously, very gradually. By only by reading, only by reading, I stress this, uh, uh, can we achieve anything? Can we distinguish between what is good and what is not so good? Sure. Um, if you take this with you to school, once the child is raised to the love of reading, this child, he or she, can take what a teacher says, not, not at face value, but a child can interact, can answer, can respond in a variety of ways that would certainly surprise us. I, I certainly couldn't agree with you more, Dr. Shukri Mujahid from Ayn Shams University based in Cairo. I certainly appreciate your insight uh, and your beneficial words. So thank you so much for your time, Dr. Shukri uh, from Ayn Shams University uh, here in Cairo. Uh, Sheikh Zakari, wonderful points. I couldn't agree more. The child that is, as, that is raised on the love of reading is different than the child that isn't. But before the phone call, you had mentioned to me, you know, you just grew up reading like most kids, just regular stories that, that, we, that we use to learn to read. But isn't it important to, I wish that organizations like Coda TV and, and publishers could print more stories that teach us how to, our children how to read by using Islamic stories, stories of the prophets, uh, Islamic history books in order to replace you know the stuff that we use now uh, because these do enter the child's brain and it has an effect on them go ahead you know uh, just from what you're saying <laughs> and this thought came to mind that uh, do you know I, I, I think so I read this on Facebook once someone uh, plucked it on his wall and uh, it said that we become amazed when we find uh, young girls who become pregnant but we the same ones that uh, you know uh, make them watch, you know, like uh, uh, programs where, uh, or, or for example, you buy for them dolls, or yeah. for example, you know, and, and they watch all these cartoons, uh, you know, youngsters who become wild and rebellious right. because watching all these uh, cartoons where there's all this bombing and shooting, and yeah. you know, and they want toy guns, and we, 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 we become amazed when they become criminals when they grow up. You right, know? right. So these, because what we have to know is, <coughs> how does how is it not amazing that a young child how does his <coughs> mind generate how does he manage to make up vocabulary who teaches the child uh, i mean you, you have a young child who's uh, who starts learning who is there to tell him this word should come after that word right. but he's able to make sentences yeah. where is that sentences generating from yeah so it shows that the human being himself also generates 
yeah. uh, uh, sentences and words are from according to what is the environment around him. Yeah. So the effect of the environment around a young child is also a cause to the expansion of his understanding, yeah. to the expansion of his vocabulary, yeah. to the expansion of how he would become later on in life. Yeah. You know? So it is very important uh, that we have an environment where we have where they watch Islamic cartoons, right. you know, uh, where the children watch, uh, read Islamic books, um, where they do not waste many girls who fall into, because they're reading all these romantic novels. Yes, there, yes. You know, and this is one of the biggest cause because novels is a fantasy, right. you know, and young girls are, are tricked by this here. Yeah. And they feel that every man who says to her the words like, you know, I care for you and that it's, it's like what uh, what happens in the novel, right? You yeah. know, so uh, basically, it is very important that we build a safe environment yes. to strengthen the mind of our youngsters so that they can make the correct decisions. Thank you, brother, because it is a, a two-edged sword. Because what happens is, because the, the lack of Islamic writers or people writing with a decent sense of Islam with Islamic values, that what are we reading also? Because a lot of these novels are filth as well. But that's why we need to, as Muslims, the, the Muslim Ummah needs to generate uh, Islamic literature and poetry and novels that is uh, not in contradiction with our values, number one. And number two, brother, regarding the cartoons, I couldn't agree with you, Sheikh Zakaria. I'm call and we, were call we are calling on Huda TV right now to please bring some Islamic cartoons to broadcast on our network. We received so many emails from parents. They're asking, Brother Malik, where are the Islamic cartoons, the stories of the Prophet? We have the Musa and Harun, which is very nice. Uh, there is some channels in this regard. But I really, like you said, I think it's really, really important for the for us to put the kids in that environment, because otherwise we're putting them, we're giving them this input, and we re expect a good output, but it's negative. We we expect a good output. Yeah. And you know, uh, basically, uh, just uh, something to 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 put forward is that we should know that there are different levels in reading, and uh, you basically get, uh, for example, the first type of reading, which is what we would call, it's just reading which is of no benefit uh, like people who go out into a a, a, a magazine store and yeah. buy the people's magazine for example yeah yeah waste of time you're basically just reading about people this one is this happened to this, this guy got this divorced and this guy got divorced waste of time you know, yeah, yeah a waste of time <laughs> right. uh, it's no benefit to you and uh, neither are you a benefit you're just wasting your money first of all right you're wasting your time uh you know so yeah. that is basically the first type of re reading that we had, that each and every person should try as much as possible. That entertainment, uh, that type of entertainment is of to no benefot. Right. But, but I'm going to interrupt you. I apologize. I mean, inshallah. Real quick, I'm just going to take a phone call from Brother Muhammad from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Muhammad. Thank you for calling. Wa alaikum Brother Malik. Hey, how are you, Brother? Thank you for calling. Yeah, it's fine, Allah. I'm following your program very well. <laughs> Malik. Thank you so much, Brother Muhammad. I, wa I want you to share with me your thoughts. Uh, speak, okay. speak about the literacy rate in Nigeria and what challenges are you facing there, the Muslim youth there in Nigeria? Okay, definitely. As have you, you have been saying, there is a great importance of reading in Islam. As the first me message sent to the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, was about reading. Prophet Muhammad wasallam, used to go to Mount Hira for prayers. One day while he was praying, Andrew Gabriel came and said to him, Read in the name of your Lord. So we Muslims, we are the Ummah of reading. Definitely. We are the Ummah of reading. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encouraged all of his followers to seek knowledge. Even if you have to go to China. He welcomed the, the travelers who could come from various countries to stop in Medina so that his followers could learn from them. Look at the great advantage which our forefathers gained. For example, one of the scholars said, I spent 40 years during which I never stood up or spat, but there was a book on my chest. Many readers this time read only with their eyes, not with their minds, and they do not focus their minds and make an effort to understand a research. The reader may let his mind wander all over the place, thinking all of kinds of worries and other business. Then suddenly notice that there a long time has passed and he has not learned anything worth remembering. For this reason, when we, re when we recite the Holy Quran, we are advised to read with concentration and focus. 
the hadith tells us that when we recite the verses of Jannah or happiness or Jahannam punishment, then we should express happiness and uh, unpleasantness or fear and sadness respectively. So some readers start off with interest and focus, but after reading a few pages, they start to get bored gradually until they lose track of what they are reading. Then they wake up suddenly after wondering. That's why it is important if you want to read, you have to get a very quiet place where you will not be disturbed by any distraction. Definitely, we, Ummah of reading now, suddenly, or very sad, we, we have been deviated from, the, from reading. Youth all over the world, they don't read as they should. We have all, there is a great need for the Ummah of Islam to go back to books, to keep our eyes on books, so that we can look, we can lead again, as we did in the past. Thank, thank you. you very much for this program. Hey, Brother, Brother Muhammad, I certainly mm -hmm. appreciate it. Thank you for your time, brother, and thank you for your thoughts. Uh, you guys, uh, thank you, uh, thank you guys at home also for, for staying tuned to our program family issues. Uh, brother Zakaria, I think we're going to take a short break. When we get back, inshallah, I want to get back to the things that you were mentioning regarding types of reading. I think this is very important inshallah. to organize our time properly. Uh, you guys at home, stay tuned. In the next segment, inshallah ta'ala, Sheikh Zakaria is going to explain to us how to benefit and organize our time uh, in a way that's beneficial for us with regards to reading. And also, we're going to be reading your Facebook comments as well. So you guys stay tuned to Family Issues. We will be right back, inshallah. فلا وربك لا يؤمنون حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينهم ثم لا يجدوا في أنفسهم حرجا مما قضيت ويسلموا تسليما There are three levels Sister Umm Rayhan from Bahrain Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Fahim from Sweden Salam alaykum Salam alaykum Sheikh, how are you? Alhamdulillah, barakallahu fiqh Fahim May Allah bless you and your family um, Sheikh, I have one question. No, that is not allowed. Why is it allowed? Because the Prophet said, Man minna. He who deceives or betrays does not belong to us. He's not one of us. Okay. A person who is giving the sadaqa or leading the prayer does not have necessarily to be praying fard. Maybe he's praying the nafl that is after the prayer, the two sunnah after vuhr or after maghrib or after isha. And the follower, the Imam, will be praying with the intention of offering the fard that he has missed. Okay, Barakallahu Fee. Reading the Quran is a blessing. Understanding its translation is beautiful, but diving in depth and extracting pearls from it is simply amazing. <laughs> Did I not ponder upon the Quran? Every week, inshallah, we will dig deep and reflect on the verses of the Quran one by one. Quran in depth with Sheikh Ibrahim Zaydan. Only on Huda TV. Welcome back to Family Issues, you guys. Uh, definitely stay tuned later on, inshallah. In this segment, we will be reading your Facebook comments posted on our Facebook page regarding the importance of reading uh, for parents as well as youth as well as adults. And uh, we have uh, Sheikh Zakaria here with us discussing uh, reading and how to organize it. Sheikh Zakaria, you had mentioned this kind of mindless entertainment reading. Now, I, I, was, I wasn't clear. In, in your opinion, was this good reading or bad reading? This is this is bad reading. Just waste because of time. It, 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 it's, it's something which you should dis discard it. it okay. it's, it's, it's no use at all. Yeah, okay. Uh, it should be thrown into the garbage bin. <laughs> yeah, know? okay. And uh, this is your first type of reading, which is to no benefit. It doesn't, it gives you information which is not benefit, uh, well. beneficial to you. Okay, you right, know? right. Uh, the second type of reading that you will get is now where a person uh, is information reading. Uh, where you read, for example, the Times magazine, right. or you would get the Regis Digest, 
Okay. Uh, these are these are benef beneficial to a certain extent. Okay. It does build up uh, knowledge. Yeah. It does cause the mind to think. It yes. gives you political information. Sure. Uh, it takes you into the academic world. You yeah. know, uh, so it, it, it's different sex in it. It's uh, according to what you're reading about, yeah. whether it's politics or whether it's economics or, you know, ba yeah. basically this is a beneficial type of reading. Okay. Uh, the third type of reading, and this is comprehensive reading, and this is uh, the most important of reading is what we would say when you read books of knowledge. Okay. This now this, what happens is, it's first of, it first of all benefits you. And it, 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 is, it is beneficial in this world, and it is beneficial as a Muslim for you in the year after. Okay. So these are the, the types of reading that you will get. And basically, we should comp uh, co co focus more on comprehensive reading, and that is reading uh, books of knowledge and information. I would say those go hand in hand to give a person that steps to take in life and to give, make his mind become a future thinker. Uh, a future entrepreneur in life, we could say, yeah. also because this is uh, uh, sources that you could use to make yourself a successful person uh, in, in in your future life. Hey, thank you, thank you, Sheikh Zakaria. My next question is, I'm, I'm going I'm to ask you this question. Then we're going to go to the Facebook. Then I want you to answer, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. So the question is, how important is it to set like a curriculum or have some sort of goals regarding reading? Because I find also with myself, if I read any book that I find interesting. Uh, in the end, I didn't really have a clear objective, and I didn't accomplish a, a specific goal. So, do you think it's important to have a set kind of curriculum or organize what type of books you should read? For example, if I'm seeking knowledge, I read X, Y, and Z. If I want to study some sort of secular field, I read. Do you do you, do you think that's okay? And uh, and inshallah, when we after we read this, I'll I'll give okay uh, information on okay that, thank know. you so much and you guys uh, uh thank you for staying tuned and we're going to go take a look at our facebook comments now which we posted on the facebook page here it is right here uh first comment is fatty care uh and uh, fatty says be the change you want to see in the world great thank you uh aisha bin zana says reading is the key to knowledge your ability to read a lot in any chosen field is equal to what you hope to achieve children also love to imitate in most cases they copy what their parents do I think that's a great comment. Thank you for sharing that, sister. No, we couldn't agree more here in the studio. Uh, Idris Jabul says, it changes me. And I, I think that's a very important comment as well because reading ch does, change, ch does change who we are. Uh, Sheikh Zakir, so what do you think about... I, I've suffered from this, and my friend told me, my good friend Hali Kilani, he told me, brother, set a curriculum uh, and, and let your reading achieve something. Because oftentimes I'll read this book, I'll read this book, and in the end I didn't have a kind of organized kind of, uh, I don't know what the word is, uh, yeah. system. Go ahead. In the, in the Kitabs of Balagha, uh, in, in Arabic el eloquence, in order for you to learn Arabic eloquence, they teach you of what to stay away from. So, for example, they would say to you, you can't go to a sick person and say, oh, subhanAllah, you know, uh, I also had the sickness. Do you know my friend died of the sickness? You know, so <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. So, you know, they, they, they say you can't use, so you need to, if you want to build your, your Arabic, you need a curriculum. You need a style, a, 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 a manner, a right. sequence. Right, In yes. order for you to become a good speaker. Right. Similarly, in order for you to become a good reader, I can't go and keep, p pick up a book of metaphysics or of science. Right. Whereas I want to uh, study maybe economics. Yeah. So basically, you need a curriculum. Then, you need to get the fundamental and basic books of that certain subjects which you are interested in. Okay. So that it can give you a view right. of what it is about. Yeah, certainly. Okay. Number two is, once you have the basics, let's take, for example, something like Arabic grammar. There's different books in Arabic grammar. You get the Tuhfatu Sinniya, you get the Ajrumiya, you get the Qatrun Nada, you get the Alfiya ibn Malik, and then you get Sibway, and then you get uh, uh, Farra. So you get different books in Arabic grammar. I can't start from, so you need to have a curriculum right. where you're going to start with the basics. Yeah. So once you have the basics and your basics are strong, then you can build a curriculum in that manner, whether it's in Usul, whether it's in Arabic, whether it's in Sharia, whether it's in, uh, uh, you know, in Hadith or Tafsir. You need to start from the bottom, have a curriculum so it could guide you. Yeah. Just to uh, elaborate on that, 
one of those scholars, Ibn Sina, uh, he was one of the great scholars in uh, metaphysics, which is uh, known as Mawara Utib, okay. you know, metaphysics. And he picked up this book and he says, I read it 50 times <laughs> and I couldn't understand why, what, 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 what does this here mean? Yeah. And he says, I gave up with the book, you know. And before I'm going to mention to, uh, b before coming to the end is I want to encourage students that let us not always be of those students that when we start reading and we come onto this field, when we don't understand something, then we turn to our teachers or we, we, we always say that, you know what, I don't understand this word, I'm just going to ask someone. Right. That means you are not teaching your brain to, to, to understand. You are not, yeah. you, you're not encouraging yourself to expand yeah. because you always going to rely on someone else, right. you know. So he says, when he came to, uh, Ibn Sina says, I came to a, a, a bookshop, and this person said, you know what, I have this book for you. So he said, no, I don't want this book, I gave up on this subject, you know. So that person said, no, just read this book, it's very beneficial. And that book happened to be an introduction to metaphysics. And when he read that, right. then everything what he read before came uh, yes. you know, became apparent for him and he could understand it much more better. Yes. So once you have your curriculum, that is the first thing. The second thing is that try your best first yourself to understand what you are reading by concentrating, checking up in the dictionary, and also a good book should be read three to four times. You should never read a book once and then just because. To give you a, the best of example, the Quran is the best of books from the time of Nabi Sallallahu till our 21st century. There are still commentaries yes. being written on the Quran. Yeah, right, right. So that just shows you yes. that you have you as the more you recite, the more meanings come out. Sure. So that is a good book. Okay. And uh, so basically, a good book should be read three to four times, and then a person would really be able to extract and understand from that book. Right, and to benefit from it, to, uh, to and apply to it, and to apply as, it. as, as yeah. opposed to reading it once and throwing it to the side. Dr. Shukri Mujahid, who we had on the phone from the University of Ayn Shams, he had mentioned, he had mentioned something interesting. He said, um, if you teach somebody how, how to read, they don't just take what their teacher says at face value. Now they can find the difference between right and wrong. I believe that's what he said. How important is that? Because I do see now in, in, in many countries the illiteracy rate is very high. So the news media, they say anything they want on television, and the people believe it because they have no other source of information. Just a guy on the screen talking. But when you read, you can say, no, I, I don't believe he's right, or I don't believe she's right, I'm going to double check this, or I'm going to look into this. So uh, can you comment on that, just as reading as a way of educating yourself in order to protect yourself and not be manipulated intellectually as well? Again, to give you the, to give you the answer of this here, let us go back again to the life of uh, uh, the, 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 the former president of South Africa, uh, uh, Nelson Mandela. Yes. And if we see what he mentioned is when he came, when he went to jail and what he had learned there and the people that he was around with and from the knowledge that he had acquired there, when he came out, it made him see life in a different way. SubhanAllah. You understand? Right. So basically, this is, and that is why he said that that was what made him say that you are never th free until your heart is free. Yes, subhanAllah. Because, like you said, if a person doesn't read, if a person doesn't equip himself with knowledge, then how are you going to be able to express what you feel inside? Yeah. And that is why you'll always try to express your feelings by being aggressive. Right. Whereas being able to express yourself yeah. through being docile and passive, and uh, that is also a way of expre uh, ex 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 expressing yourself. Yeah, thank you. Buddy. So this is a very important point to take into consideration. Yeah, of course, and you can benefit generations after us and other people around us at the same time, but you couldn't, re you couldn't reach without, without uh, literacy, uh, re without reading and writing. Uh, we want to go back to the Facebook real quick, Sheikh Zakaria. Uh, we have another comment here from uh, Sumna uh, Taqiq, who says books have a strong influence on our thinking pattern to the extent that they can brainwash. It's really important to verify the kind of authors we choose. Great point. Doc. Thank you for the brothers in the control who put that up. Executive, this goes to exactly what we were saying, isn't it? In order to protect yourself from this kind of intellectual uh, manipulation. When you can read, you can uh, protect yourself uh, from that. Sheikh, many of our, our respected scholars that when we say their names, we say, uh, we say, may Allah have mercy on him. 
uh, like uh, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, may Allah have mercy on him, uh, all the big ulama of this, of this ummah, I think at some point in time, they had been sent to prison and, and jailed unjustly. And during the time in jail, they had authored great works that benefit us today. So when they were in jail, it was as if they were free because the, the power of literacy and their faith in Allah, being able to express that through literacy, well, they were essentially free while in prison. Can you talk about that a little bit? And even if you take yeah. Imam Ahmad ibn al-Hanbal, Ibn Taymiyyah, for example, he also <laughs> had <laughs> written many books while he was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Imam Saraqsi, he was also in a well when he wrote uh, the kitab Nurul, uh, which is a uh, Nurul Anwar. Uh, so many of the scholars who were jailed, I remember some of the scholars from Hind, uh, who, who had written uh, tafsirs of the Quran while they were in jail. Yes, you know, uh, I remember uh, one of us that had been mentioned that some of the scholars that came over to Cape Town in South Africa, some of them had written the entire Quran while they were present and uh, imprisoned in, in, in South Africa. So uh, basically, uh, these are different, uh, showing you uh, that uh, when they were, uh, because of that knowledge, when they were in uh, captivity and seclusion, they were able to engage themselves yes. in still speaking to the world, yet they were away from the world, you know, yet yeah. they were kept apart, but yeah. they were still alive by them, and they are still alive in today's time, yes. right, you know. Right, right. Uh, knowledge is something which keeps you alive. Yeah. I mean, Imam Bukhari, rahmatullah alayhi, has yeah. passed away many years ago, but each and every institute that you would go to, they have to teach uh, the kitab of hadith, of Imam Bukhari. Yes, yeah, so uh, You know, so basically it shows you uh, that uh, the acceptance and also his works, what a great effect it had on, uh, on everybody. Thank you, brother. I certainly appreciate your time, Sheikh Zakaria. Mm -hmm. And now you're back in Cairo. I hope to have you on the future episodes, inshallah. I mean, inshallah. Thank you. I mean, thank you so much. And you guys at home, thank you for watching. I hope you, I certainly hope you uh, really benefited from this program, reading, the importance of reading as youth, as adults, and especially for our children the next generation. If you want to rewatch this, re -watch this episode, just get on our YouTube channel, 3ws.youtube.com slash Huda TV. Uh, that's all we have for this time. Until next time, I leave you in the care of Allah. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alone. You are never alone Through sorrow and through grief Through happiness and peace You are never alone So now, as you long for your past Prepare for your future But knowing nothing's gonna last You see this life is but a road, a straight and narrow path to our final abode. So travel well, O Muslim, and paradise will be your home. And always remember that you are never alone.